Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. We caught up with Stephen Stewart today, chairman of the Ore Group. He talks to us about one of his companies today, QC Copper and Gold. After 20,000 meters of drilling, they're going to deliver a, a resource imminently and a PEA by Q4 this year and a PFS for the end of next year. If you want to hear our thoughts and opinions about their ability to do that, uh, you can find that at cruxinvestor.com. And if you want to see precisely what we talked about today, take a look in the description below. Stephen, how are you, sir? Good morning, Matt. I'm doing very well. Yourself? I always forget that. It's very early at your time. So good morning to you, sir. How, how have you been? Doing great. We've been very busy since we've last spoke about QC. Lots, lots going on. Um, sun is shining here and we just got back from a site visit. So uh, we're excited to give everybody an update. Right, cool. Well, let, let's do it. Before we do, let's give us that one minute overview and I'll pick it up from there. Sure, so QC Copper, as, as our name indicates, we're a Quebec focused copper and gold company. Uh, we've got uh, two assets. Uh, one is called the Opamisca and the other is called Roger. Our, our flagship and our almost exclusive focus is this Opamisca copper mine complex. It is a an X. Falcon Bridge operation. It was four underground high-grade mines, which shut down in, in 1991. We've since acquired it, and we had this thesis, or we saw in the data that there was disseminated mineralization all throughout, just very similar to the Malarctic story, the Detour story, the Cote Lake story. So we saw that um, in the data, we did a drill program in 2019 to prove our thesis had excellent results. Last year, 2020, that is, we raised substantial capital to go out there and systematically uh, drill the project. Just about two weeks ago, we completed that drill program, which was 20,000 meters. Uh, we're, we're halfway through approximately releasing these results to the market. So between now and call it the end of summer, we're going to have consistent news flow in terms of uh, intersections, and all to be culminated by a resource calculation, which I think is the real value driver here, uh, because uh, us and our shareholders want to be able to define what the Opamisca is, and this is going to be our first shot at it. So we're quite excited about uh, that. And of course, last I'll mention, we've got this fantastic infrastructure, which is really unparalleled. When you look at our comparables, we are, uh, not only are we in the heart of Quebec, we're in the Shibugamu district, which uh, was a major, major uh, copper district in Eastern Canada. And we're looking to uh, redefine it as, as a new burgeoning copper uh, production with, with uh, access to um, rail, road, power, everything you want, great First Nations uh, relationships. So we check a lot of the boxes and uh, we're very excited to be moving this project forward. So that's Brilliant. our intro. Brilliant, okay. Well, uh, well, we'll get into a little bit of detail because we haven't spoken since October, middle of October last year. Um, and and this, you know, looking through the press releases, you've been busy. Um, talk to me about the ore group though. You know, you're, you're heading up and well, you've, you've created this ore group, six companies in total. Um, how are you finding juggling all of that responsibility and uh, running QC? full-time job. There's no question, but I couldn't do it without our team. Um, uh, I, I am the, the chair of the org group each, as you say, we do have, we have five publicly traded companies, a sixth on the way. Um, by and large, most of them have a, an individual other than me responsible for running the day-to-day. -day. Uh, in QC's example, it's Charles Beaudry. Uh, Charles is the one that sourced this project. He, he knew the owners of the project for nearly 30 years. He had been working on it prior to our involvement in it for 10 years, assist consulting and assisting with them. Um, so, so Charles is the, is, is the brains behind the rocks on this. And then he and I leveraged the org group and all the benefits it brings to give it access to capital, manage the, call it the admin and the operation, the marketing, et cetera. And so, so that's what org group does it allows us to acquire projects, select the right individuals to shepherd it forward, uh, all the while relying on uh, our broader team to push everything else forward and just adds value, drops our unit costs. Uh, but it also gives, I think, you know, for me, I'm often asked, why did I start the org group? And to me, it's just about establishing trust. I think trust in investing in management is probably. Uh, the biggest handicap this industry has is who do I trust and can I trust this individual? And so we do our very best to um, set a plan and execute it and then communicate with shareholders on the regular. And so I think if, if we can deliver success on QC Copper, and certainly we anticipate we will, um, 
I think that reflects very well in our other companies like um, Orfinders, Mustango, Baseload, uh, American Eagle Gold, which we just launched. And of course, our, our new launch, uh, Nickel. We're going to get exposure to Nickel. I know you love Nickel. And we've got a new company called D-Block. And uh, we're very excited to, to, to get into that. But but QC, I think it all, all else equal, I think QC has our flagship asset in terms of if I had to select one single asset, it's the Opamisca. Uh, why? Because we know the most about it. It, it has a, an amazing data. So it's this program that we just completed, the 20,000 meters, is not necessarily completely about discovery. It's about definition, delineation, and confirmation of what we know that will allow us to talk about it within the 43101 context. Okay, I, I do want to get on to it, I, but I just want to help people. So you and I have had a bit of a relationship now for a couple of years because we were there at the beginning when you started some of these companies. You know, there are four or five million bucks of small companies, companies with hair on them, companies which had not a lot of data, but you've you done it. And to be fair to you, you know, there are 25 to 35 million market cap each of these things now. So you, you have created shareholder value. And that's why we keep following you, because we're, we're intrigued by the process that you're going through. Um, I'm also intrigued by D-Block, where they looks like a shamrock <laughs> to me. Um, but we, we'll, we'll talk about Nickel another time. So you, you have you have delivered what you said you were going to. And I don't think Cheryl was going to ask for anything more, anyone looking at cast for anything more. So that's all good. But I, I'm not quite clear what the what the plan is here. Are you trying to say, we are the kind of company who takes it through the development stage and then flips these things on? We are, um, we produce projects for others to, you know, develop, develop, either later stage developers or builders of projects. Or do you, have you got some, thought in your head that actually, no, I, th I think we can be creators of meaningful projects in Canada. I mean, how, what is it that, that you are? How do you describe yourselves as all group? Well, every, I think we're problem solvers, really. Um, you know, you, you said we, we look for problems. We look for problems that we believe we can solve or the market is overlooking. Uh, obviously, if they have fatal flaws, we pass. We, we, we look at all sorts of projects. But if we can identify... Um, something that is mispriced. And I think that the junior market represents um, the most inefficient market in the world to the upside and to the downside. And so I think if you spend um, your life examining these uh, mispriced opportunities and trying to take advantage of them, provided you've got the right people that can assess these problems, all the while understanding that there is, it's hugely cyclical. You know, it's the, the macro. So you got to layer the macro on top of that. If you can sort of put those things together and, and play it, uh, play the cycles, if you will, and try to buy problem assets out of distressed situations in a down market, um, sit and wait a little bit because you got to be patient in this industry. It's impossible to time it. So you, you can never forecast precisely your timing, but you have to have the conviction that the cycle's coming back because this time isn't different. It's the same thing over and over again. It just looks a little bit different. So, so that's the, the fundamental premise of, our, of, of the org group and really me. It's about being counter cyclical, but not just for the sake of it, uh, for, the, for, the, for the sake of identifying opportunities that we can buy cheap, invest when there is available capital to us at, at, a, at a palatable cost, meaning we're not giving away the farm, and then allocate that capital intelligently to solve problems to move it forward. Now you asked, are we interested in building mines? Are we interested in, in flipping them? Well, every solution requires a different, um, or, or has a, every question has a different solution, really. So I, I cannot answer that holistically for the portfolio. I think by and large, uh, I've always said many times, I don't really want to build a mine. That's not our area of expertise. Could we shift gears? Sure, I suppose we could, but I think really it's about uh, defining, let's talk about the Opamisca as, as a specific example. It's about taking something that is undefined in the context of the 43101, defining it, putting, understanding that geology, its size, its grade, its metallurgy, putting numbers on that, quantifying that so that the market and our shareholders can understand it, and then um, look to move it forward towards the engineering side, which is what we'll get to later in the year. We'll take a first pass on it, the PEA. It's really just establishing something where once there was nothing 
And that in and of itself creates value. And if you can do that in the face of a copper wave, which we are clearly in, and I do not think this is a small term wave. I think there's a long term cyclical bull market coming for copper and precious metals. Um, then if the stars align, then we can create a lot of value for our shareholders. But that's the point I'm getting to. I just want to know how you're going to play this because you were saying each, each of your companies has a, has a, has a commodity. You've got to work out how and when you, so where you can take them to, based on the team that you've got right now, based on where you, how you think the market's going to play out. Because you've got to leave a little bit something on the on the table for the next guy, right? And you, you know, or else you're you're in danger of kind of riding it down the riding it down the the, the next cycle, you know. So I'm trying to work out how I should I be investing in you because you know what you're doing. You've got a game plan for the for the all group or for each one of these companies, uh, or is it just same old, same old, that's with a whole bunch of other juniors in this space? Are you smarter well, think, than the you know, next guy? It, it's, I'm not smarter than the next guy. I'm smart enough. And I think I surround myself with people, hopefully that are as smart or smarter than me. And then, then we work hard and then we, we follow through on what we say we're going to do. We do our best. That's, that's the only guarantee I can offer. And so, so, it's about selecting the right people. I guess I am the, the face of the org group. I am the CEO of QC Copper. So if you don't trust me, don't invest in QC Copper first and foremost. Um, from then, you got to pick your commodity. Do you want exposure to copper? If you do, take a look at us. And then, then you go down and you look at our asset and the potential. And, and it, 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 it's as simple as that. Now, I cannot, while I have a conviction in the copper price and, and the EV story, that could all change tomorrow. I mean, it's it's beyond us. So we don't time the market. We we don't time the market specifically to the macro, but we do take you know we do have a thesis, and that started off three or four years ago with copper. We said, well, where can we buy a great asset in Canada that was focused on copper? We settled on this one, and we just have to move it forward. We don't have the luxury necessarily of putting things on pause if. If copper were to fall out of bed, which is entirely possible, but I guess what I'm trying to say is we don't hyper time the market. We we have a thesis based on a particular commodity. We identify an opportunity or an individual. Um, for example, base load is a, is was a, was around an individual. Okay, it was James Sykes, brilliant young geologist, um, knows it lives and breathes the uranium. Let's build a company around him. That was the first thing, and then we built assets from him. So that's how that particular opportunity came about. And I have high hopes for that. But QC was the opposite. QC was an asset. This was a, we saw an opportunity again, something we, a thesis that is close to us because we were involved with the Cote Lake project, which is now a 10 million ounce deposit, uh, which was an underground high grade gold underground mine in its previous lives. And our group drilled the discovery hole, which was a disseminated hole. So that sort of that model has always stuck with us. And so when we saw something similar to that in the Opamisca, where it, it checked all those same boxes, and again, that's the same model that the, that the guys at Osisco use from Alarctic, which Detour used to develop it. Uh, if, you can, if you can turn these old mines, which for a whole host of reasons, whether it's engineering or economics, we're, we were not viable as open pit deposits. And in fact, 20, 30 years ago, open pit deposits, uh, certainly in the precious metal space, was not necessarily in vogue. That wasn't really where uh, the Canadian marketplace was, but that has obviously changed. And so when we saw that opportunity to do this in Quebec with copper, uh, with our original thesis that copper is going to run, and, it, and I think we're still at its infancy, um, it, and, and then at the price that we acquired it at, I guess everything is always a function of price. And so... We acquired it at very favorable terms. We approached the vendor and it wasn't a cash rich deal. It was, let's be our partner, take some shares, have some options, and then let's partner this and build it together. Uh, there was an established level of trust there. Because as I said, Charles sourced this. He had a relationship with his family going back 30 years. He knew the asset intimately better than anybody. And so that whole partnership aspect allowed us to acquire it. I don't think we would have been able to acquire it with without that level of trust that this family is very established, sophisticated mining family, um, they wouldn't have just sold it to anybody, certainly not at the entry level price that we got it at. And then they're very impressed with what we've been able to do. 
Um, and really, it's about raising the capital. We've raised a good deal of capital. There's going to be more capital ahead of us, for sure, uh, if we are going to take this to where we think it can go. Okay, so you think you've timed it right. You think it's a copper's in its infancy in terms of where, where it's going. So that was the smart thing, buying cheap at the right time. That's part of your skill set. Well, that's part of our strategy, certainly, is, is, to, is to buy right. I think you cannot uh, make money if you're buying at the top. So we, we, we play the peaks and we play the troughs. Um, you know, we, we're gonna we're we're never gonna time it perfectly, and there's all sorts of macro elements that can happen that changes our plans. And that's another thing: when new information comes, you you pivot. And so we've done that many times. Uh, as I said, you know, QC Copper is an example. Is, is an example when we acquired it in in, uh, in 2018, did the drill program in 2019 to prove our thesis. That's where we got those eye popping first intersections, which you know put us on the map. However, the copper market wasn't there. I mean, copper was, I didn't even know what the price was back then, but it's, it, there just wasn't appetite. So we decided to just sit back and wait and wait for the copper excitement to come because we knew it was coming. It's just a function of time. So we, we, we just kept uh, batting down the hatches, kept the, made sure we kept the tenure. I mean, that's always the most important thing in the junior mining industry. If you have, this, if you have the, the cyclicality strategy is make sure you keep tenure. And then when, when the market heats up, we did that. And so we took it from, uh, you know, we were three, $4 million. Within six months, we raised uh, $6 million, $5 million, uh, you know, just after we spoke to you, um, taking it from a three, four cent stock to financing it at 15 cents. Now we're, uh, you know, o- over 20s. I think we could be on our way to 30s and 40s in no time. I really do. So, and and then we'll look to raise additional capital after we've defined what this project yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, let's get on to it. You've done about 20,000 meters of, uh, of drilling. You've had put some results out. You, you've still got more results to come out. Uh, and that should be, when should we get the, the sum total of those results? By the end of what? Some total, some total is going to be probably August, September, I would say. So uh, just to be specific, we, we've we released about half of the holes so far of, of those 20,000 meters. They're, they come in a fairly steady fashion and we, we press release them as, as by and large as they come. The final results or final assays were expected to receive them towards the end of July. And then we will be working furiously and fastly with our uh, 43101 author to complete the resource estimation model, which, which is by and large complete, although it's being updated in real time with these new uh, data. Okay. And then you need the economics on it. Precisely. Well, precisely. So after we've re- released the geology, which defines... Um, tons and grades, and, and maybe we'll have some indication on strip, then we'll shift gears towards uh, preliminary economic analysis, which is going to define its engineering. Um, metallurgy, we'll do more work on the metallurgy. And then, of course, it's economics, obviously, the big three, the, the IRR, NPV, and the payback. And, and from there, we've put a, a pin in where this asset begins. Now, I emphasize where it begins. Uh, it's at that point in time, we've defined how, uh, how small it is, to put it in context. We know it's going to get bigger. Uh, but I think uh, if you look at our enterprise value, I mean, I always come back. We're a $24 million company. We've got this huge position in base load, which is worth over $10 million. bucks. We've got $4 million in cash. So our shareholders are receiving single-digit millions for valuation for the Opamiska and the Roger project. So, so to me, we are cheap. You're not going to get too much cheaper. So what we want to do is we want to define this, this project. We think we have the opportunity to hit out of the park with this resource estimation, make some noise, bring our share price up to where I believe we should be, uh, which is many times where we are right now, and then um, raise additional capital to make this even bigger. Because there's, you know, we've just been focusing on this open pit aspect. There's, there's two, there were two pits in our model prior to this 20,000 meters. We believe we've done enough drilling and had enough success in between those two pits to make it a single large open pit, which has significant consequences in terms of strip, uh, strip ratio and, and tons. And, and then um, beyond, beyond that, we've got 13,000 hectares uh, and, and two, uh, th- uh, two other mines that we haven't really paid any attention to, plus the extension eastwards of it. So there's, there's going to be an opportunity to take whatever the resource number is, let's call it X, and make it X times Y in, term, in, in future development. And then, of course, there's opportunity at depth. All of these mines were underground mines. 
our, our pit as defined right now doesn't go deeper than 300 meters, but the mineralization they were mining goes down to a kilometer. Uh, when, when the Perry mine closed, which is the one of the two uh, pits we're f- focused on right now, when it closed, it had nearly 3 million tons at nearly 3% and reserves left over underground. So we know that's there. And those are real numbers because those are Falcon Bridge numbers. They were mining company numbers. So there's all sorts of um, expansion opportunities on this project when, we ha- when we're when we appropriately capitalized at the appropriate cost of capital. Right, why do you keep putting so much value on the, the ba- having baseload stock? Because of baseload, what are they, 30, 32 million? given the day of the week, you, you wouldn't be able to offload that. It's not really liquid for you. So No, it's not. No, that's a, you're, it's a very fair statement. And I've always said that it's not like it's not liquid. Now, we will monetize that. Make no mistake about it. Um, but but it's not realistic for us to unload $10 million in shares today. Although, you know, you never know. There are there. I have been approached by companies who want a position in base load. So call it strategic investors. Um, we're not sellers right now because I believe that baseload has work to do and value to create. Um, I don't uh, place too much more value on, except I just state the facts. And the facts are, we've got 19 million shares of baseload energy, which is at a, which right now is at a half of what it was um, six months ago. And I think that it can realistically um, get back to those highs and beyond. And I think uh, in the coming days and weeks, you'll see that we're going to be out on the ground, uh, moving towards the our, our drilling on on, on base load. So I think there's an opportunity there. But um, it's just the fact that we we like to we like to emph- not emphasize it, but certainly state it because it's a material part of our market cap. No question about it. I, well, I wonder if it is. I, I'm not so sure it is today, but I think it could be significant in the future. It- is the way, way I would look at it, but you know, everyone's got their own opinion. Um, can we just can we just talk about? I want to be really clear with Opa Muska because it's your flagship project, not just for this company, but possibly for Ore Group. It has real potential. Yeah, I think that's what you're saying to me. Um, is this the one that you could build? You could have the com- a meaningful, honest conversation. This is the one we possibly would look at, maybe ramping up to try and build or do you just or do you just flog it well my objective is to create as much value for shareholders i think for us in order to i know that's a standard line but it's true and so uh, we are prepared to do whatever it takes um that's that's the bottom line do is it my preference and i'll be very frank is it my preference to completely retool uh, to build a mine no it's not it is my preference to define this asset grow this asset um have copper continue its course, and and then I think it's going to be inevitable for juniors such as ourselves, QC copper, to be taken out. Um, and it's because there's just so few assets. So so to me, I think it's inevitable that high quality assets uh, with copper in jurisdictions like Canada are take out candidates, just, just no question about it. And, and I think we're gonna be the best of the bunch and the biggest of the bunch in Canada. So, uh, and, and furthermore, we're in the Shibugamu district, which has other assets outside of us. So I think that that entire jurisdiction is up for grabs uh, when m picks up. And you know, I've been waiting for m for a long time. Again, I, I know it's an, an inevitability, it's coming. There's no question about it for, for copper and for gold. I, I think likely if it not been for COVID, we would have seen that wave uh, you know, happen much sooner because it's just very difficult to, to even get to sites, uh, but it's coming. And I think as, as copper stays above $4, very healthily above $4, as, as the mining companies are having trouble. I mean, we were talking about South America. There's some f- fantastic drill results occurring in these large porphyry uh, projects, uh, wherever they may, may be, Ecuador, Argentina, et cetera, just mind blowing stuff, really, kilometer uh, type intersections. Uh, but, you know, and, and those are great projects and nothing against them, but those aren't being built anytime soon. Uh, not for this cycle. Odds are certainly not, you know, more than one of them. So, um, so I think if producers are looking for near term, lower risk opportunities that, that don't come with a billion dollar capex. They're going to be looking at projects like the Okamiska. Um, that's just what I, that's just how I feel about it. 
Yeah, it's interesting that that kind of capex, con uh, you know, conundrum and the South America versus North America conundrum that's, that seems to be going on at the moment. Um, in interesting debate. Um, can we talk about um, Roger? Because mm -hmm. y you've got what fifty percent of that at the moment. Correct. Do you have right so of first we, refusal or option? You, you've got timing on options? We have a joint venture. A traditional joint venture agreement with the other 50% owner is a company called Soquem. And Soquem is a, is a quasi-governmental organization owned by the Quebec government. So they're fantastic partners. We know them well. In fact, they're owned by Investissement Quebec, which is the Case Depot, which is the largest pension fund in Quebec. Um, uh, we are the operators. Um, I won't comment on how that 50% is going to sort of play out, but certainly uh, I, I think it's fair to say that we would like to increase our interests and we'd have plans to do that. Uh, it's, it's within their right to match our capital and, and we'll see how that goes. Um, but they're great partners to have. Uh, as I said, they're, they're very well connected into the Quebec scene, which is very important. Uh, and, and in fact, indirectly, I believe they were shareholders uh, in QC Copper um, before that transaction. So now we're partners on the Opamisco, we're partners on the Roger. The Roger project itself, it's, it's a 535,000 ounce, uh, it's actually gold rich, uh, one gram deposit, which is about 10 kilometers to the east of the Opamisca. So it wasn't just a random acquisition, it was a strategic acquisition. One that I know uh, other competitors in the area were, were, were very after when they found out it was available. We didn't go and source it, it just came to us through relationships. The company that sold their 50% to us uh, is, is restructuring, sort of rolling back, doing that sort of thing and going to Africa. And they wanted to monetize uh, their, their position in, in that company as it wasn't their focus. And so we, we made them a quick offer. We bought it for less than $5 an ounce in the ground, which you know, I, I believe were 2015 prices. So it was really a, you know, a, a fantastic bargain for us to do it. Um, we're not, while I do believe in the broader consolidation of the Shibugamu camp, it's not our strategy now because it, it very clearly, as I said, we want to focus on the Opamiska to get our cost of capital down and then make some acquisitions. But the price here, we just had to jump at it. Uh, outside of the resource, as it's known, it is pit constrained, which is such an important thing for your in investors and listeners to appreciate the difference between a, a resource estimate and one that is pit constrained. So if it's pit constrained, that means it's in within a realistic mining shell. If it's not pit constrained, sometimes they're counting ounces that are down here and will never be mined in the context of that pit. So to have something that's over 500,000 ounces at a gram in the heart of Quebec on the highway right next to the rail, uh, stones throw from our existing project to buy that at less than $5 an ounce was a deal that we can't pass up. But however, it's got exploration potential. There was a hole that was drilled 500 meters with mineralization throughout. Uh, it's a porphyry type, uh, porphyry style of mineralization, which we found to be unusual in, 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 in that area. But nonetheless, that's what we see. So down the road, I talked about areas of expansion outside of the Opamisca. That's certainly going to be one area that we're going to look very closely at. But that was a huge accretive transaction for our company. Uh, we've got it in our back pocket, and we'll, we'll probably pay more attention to it in 2022. Okay, so but you know, and your JV partner knows that you're going to need more than 50% because financing becomes a lot easier when you've got a sort of uh, majority position in the company. It's probably no skin off their nose. They're, they're, you know, they're a big outfit. Um, well, I don't think it's there, you know, just to be clear, and I don't want to speak on their behalf, but it, it's uh, Soquem, their mandate is to support uh, mining and exploration in Quebec, not to be operators and builders of mines. So, so really, they, they prefer grassroots type stuff. This asset has grown beyond what I think they feel comfortable being the operators and, and focused on. So they really want to get to the grassroots level. So I think I... I it's my belief that when we present them with a work program, that they will choose to allow that allow themselves to be diluted, and um, and 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 as we put money into the ground, which is which is an accretive way for us to, to gain that interest as opposed to paying cash, we put the money into the ground, grow the resource, they benefit, we benefit, everybody's happy. Yeah. Okay. No, that, that's that's fair, that's fair enough. Um, with regards to the the timing of the PEA, you're looking at what sort of Q4, are you? Is that the 
should we say? I think, you know, I think we can get it done by the end of the year. That's the plan. Um, again, both the resource estimate and the PEA are being done by the same group, a very well-known group um, here in Canada based out of Toronto. In fact, we've worked with them in the past. And in fact, we have worked with them for well over a year on, on the Opamiska. So they built our, so just to be clear, we have a resource today prior to the 20,000 meters done by this, excuse me, independent group. We built our drill program around that. Now, it's not 43101, so we're not talking about how big it is and et cetera, et cetera, but we have a very good understanding of what it is uh, that's going to be updated. So, so I guess my point is the, the model and the resource estimate ha have been a work in progress for a year. And in addition to that, as as the PEA. So we've been doing a lot of work in parallel. We've already started the metallurgical work, the baseline environmental stuff has been started. And from there, um, you know, a PEA is largely a desktop exercise. Uh, there's not a lot of geotechnical drilling at this point in time. We'll save that for the pre-feasibility, which is going to come after the PEA. So, and then in terms when, of- How quickly after? Well, I think let's call it a 2022 project. You know, we're not, we're not going to waste much time. I think uh, I think we'll we'll look to recapitalize ourselves, bring in a, a, you know uh, a, a new round of financing, which will see us through to the pre feasibility. Um, and, and and I'll note, you know, I think that we we don't have to do a lot of definition drilling for the the the, the pre feasibility. We can certainly do expansion drilling, but a very large portion of this resource estimate is going to come in at the indicated. So very, not a lot of inferred, a little bit of measured. And why that's important is because you're not allowed to include the inferred into your pre-feasibility. So, so the, the estimate that we come out with um, shortly is going to be largely good enough for pre-feasibility. So we'll, we'll be in pretty good shape. Now, obviously, you've got to do a lot more work on the engineering side. However, um, we're not building any major infrastructure pieces. Uh, no roads, no bridges, no, no, no rail. The rail comes literally right to our property, paved highway, et cetera. So uh, we don't have to deal with major uh, items like that. Now, make no mistake about it, building a mine and a mill are complex uh, strategies. Obviously, the metallurgical work will have to get done. Uh, but, but that's all par for the course, and we're in the middle of Quebec so it's, it's not like we're reinventing the wheel. There are plenty of uh, very good proxies for us to lean on. Okay, I think I know the answer to the next question, but I'll ask it because several people have asked. Um, with regards to further M&A work um, in the region, you're telling us how, how great it is right now. So are you looking to pick up any other projects, assets? Not today. Um, down the road, absolutely. I think if, if we can buy... So again, to be clear, our... our the only focus is delineating this resource and its economics. Um, failing any, you know, black tail or, or sort of, you know, long tail events that just sort of fall in our lap, which is always a possibility, um, like the Roger was. But um, I do believe in m a but not now. Um, I, I want to get this thing um uh, much bigger on its own organically. And then uh, there's no question in my mind that down the road, call it 2022, 2023, there is an opportunity to put the entire Shibugamu district together. Okay. And that would create value. Right. Yeah. Okay. But timing, as we said at the beginning, is everything. Timing is, is critical. Yeah. Okay. Um, and just finally, if you don't mind, so what, what's happening with the saddles? Because you talked about the open pits, et cetera. So What's the saddle? What's the implications of what's happening? So the saddle zone is um, it's it's okay. So we have the, the Springer, the two out of the four mines that we're focused on is one is the Springer mm. and the other is the Perry. They're, they they look like this in terms of our 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 whittle pits, if you will. And then in between is the saddle zone. And when when Falcon Bridge was mining this, there was no mining in between there. There was you know sparse drilling. Uh, because they don't believe that they had the major veins. They weren't getting 10% copper in, in this saddle zone. Uh, but there was definitely whiffs of copper, but as I said, very little drilling. So um, last week, we released the first round of holes on the saddle zone, which is virgin ground. And we released uh, 0.78 copper equivalent over nearly 80 meters was one hole. We had 0.5 over, I think, 50 meters. So that is ore grade mineralization for sure, uh, when you consider that our cutoff grade is 0.25. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that saddle zone now, you know, those two pits, hopefully 
uh, once we model it, but we have a, we have good confidence to become one single pit. And so that, that has implications on the tons. So, you know, we definitely want to be as, as many tons as we possibly can. So you justify the building of that mill. Um, so we're going to get the tons in between that virgin ground, but, you know, on top of that, uh, just because the way pits are designed, that could have implications on, on the depth. So those two mines, uh, the, the two mines, as I said, Springer and Perry are approximately 300 meters. But if you if you account for, for this new material there, that allows you to go a little bit deeper. How much deeper? I don't know. But we, we think we're going to have a good good shot at it. So the, the, the moral of this story is that the saddle zone and its recent results were very significant. And uh, it gives us a lot of optimism about this resource estimate coming out. Fantastic. Okay, so um, resource estimate, PA this year, possibly some cash. You're four million in the bank now. You don't necessarily Correct. want to be cashing in or trying to cash in base load. Um, to, you know, solve your cash, not cash, your cash requirements. So, what does 2022 look like? PFS, we've heard. What else? Well, I think, you know, I don't want to get too far ahead of us. I think, you know, I, I don't want to talk about 2022. I want to talk about, you know, this resource and, and the economics that will follow that. I think that's keeping us plenty busy. Let's get that under our belt and then we'll see we'll see how the world looks. Uh, I think that, you know, we'll absolutely look to capitalize ourselves when the time is right. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I'm very sensitive about the cost of capital. Um, but we're going to be needing money to move this forward. No question about it. That we are in the junior mining industry. We don't cash flow, and so it, it's important that we keep ourselves very capital well capitalized. Um, and it's also very important to raise money when you don't need it. You don't want to raise money when you're on your back heels because that's when you get taken to the cleaners. So when the time is right, uh, we will raise capital. Our group, uh, you know, talking about the ore group, I think the very fact that we have a, a, you know, a mining house, a group, um, lots of connections, uh, and we've, who's all demonstrated the ability to raise capital at fair prices when we need, just um, I think should give investors uh, some, some confidence that when, when we need the money, it's going to be there. Brilliant. Stephen, I appreciate your time today. It's been nice uh, following your journey. Keep coming back on. Really keen to see how these, well, all of the group companies um, proceed. But uh, yeah, good luck with uh, QC Copper and Gold as well. Fantastic. It's, it's always a pleasure to be here, my, uh, Matt. And uh, we'll, we'll come back shortly. We'll, we'll be sure to book an interview when this resource comes out and we'll, we'll, we'll talk specifics.